can you believe it's already Thursday? That means another week and another episode of The Flash. This will be my long-form review of Season 9, Episode 4, Mask of the Red Death, Part 1. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel, and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. As always, another week and another review of The Flash. I've been excited about this episode in particular as it focuses heavily, or is said to be focusing heavily, on The Red Death. We get Mask of the Red Death Part 1 this week and Part 2 next week, and I'm very curious, after seeing this first episode, how Part 2 is going to dive even deeper into the lore, into the story about The Red Death. We obviously know that a lot of characters from our past, a lot of characters that we are excited to see, will be returning in this final season and i think after watching episode one or part one of this this two-part series i think it has become a lot more clear as to how some of these characters will be returning so we're going to get all into that first we'll jump into the story a general take on the episode i'm sure you guys have already seen it um this episode focuses on the red death specifically she kidnaps barry and you know uh, we knew that she was gathering pieces over the last three episodes in order to build a cosmic treadmill and we never really knew why we knew that barry in this episode based on the previews for this episode you know we knew that barry gets captured wasn't sure how that happened how that happened was relatively anticlimactic you know he got you know your typical bamboozle Barry, for some reason, has faced a lot of villains, yet for some reason cannot seem to be ready for any of them ever. Uh, so he gets bodied really quickly. They kidnap him. And I was, was curious when I saw the preview for this episode, just how, why why did Red Death need Barry? Why did Red Death capture Barry? What, what was the purpose of this? So all of this we find out in this episode. We find out that Barry, that, that we find out a lot more about Red Death, which off the jump, I have to applaud them for. I think that was well done. I was really hoping they weren't going to you know drag this out into part two or whatever part one we get right to the point in terms of why red death uh who red death is where she comes from you know what her general purpose and plan are and uh, you know i gotta say I, I you know it made sense i liked it um but she obviously needs barry because her speed is not natural it is manufactured speed force uh speed energy based on the tech that you know she developed based on studying barry in her earth and so she needs organic speed in order for you know to use on this treadmill in order to open a portal in which she can get back to her earth and start wreaking havoc me personally if i was barry i'd say let's do it um let me open this portal for you so that you can get back to your earth and get the hell out of mine but obviously that doesn't go as planned so you know you have john core's character who's chill playing in the, in the episode and he, you know he's doing a lot of back and forth stuff to be honest with you guys i really don't like chill blaine i think he's a pointless character i thought he was pointless back then but i felt like he had some he said he had some semblance of purpose because he was with killer frost now that killer frost is gone that character really does not need to exist and they keep trying to push for him to be a part of team flash even though i don't think anybody ever considered him a part of team flash not even once you know i think T i think killer frost was a part of team flash but i never for a second thought like oh after killer frost is gone that chill blaine just becomes a you know a, you know an honorary member because he didn't really provide anything for the team but that is what it is you know as i predicted you guys have been hanging out in the live streams i always predicted that chill blaine was going to be doing a flip-flop right he's good and then he does something bad then he realizes his mistake tries to do something good again and that's exactly to the extent of what he does in this episode and then they try to go back and try to save him or whatever all that stuff i didn't really like but like i said she needs a cosmic treadmill you know chill blaine you know he obviously you know betrays her he's betrayed team flash he really just is all over the place and so you know it is what it is but that's probably the only part of the episode that i didn't like i did like the story i did enjoy the fact that you know they brought a little bit more context in, in terms of red death i like the part with iris outside of just a couple of moments that i found to be a little cheesy in terms of cheesy i also found the end of the episode to be relatively cheesy and and more or less just kind of lackluster but in terms of the general makeup of this episode I felt it to be i felt it to be strong i felt similarly to this episode the way i felt about episode three episode three rogues of war was a relatively strong episode a strong entry into the final season i felt like it was progressing things yeah they were playing a little bit more on the lighthearted side the fun side right with only 13 episodes that did kind of rub me the wrong way because i'm like okay i feel like i feel like this season should be a lot more serious than it has been but episode four does dive into a little bit more seriousness and we do still have nine episodes so I, you know i'm i'm still holding out hope that things will improve especially as we get closer closer to episode nine which will present you know diggle and oliver and wally right and i'm sure many other characters so i'm i'm holding out hope 
Uh, but for the first, you know, four episodes or whatever, yeah, I felt like they were leaning a little bit more heavily into the, the comedic side. Um, but this episode, like I said, did have a little bit more edge to it, a little bit more structure in terms of the storytelling. Uh, and and I, I'm good with that. You know, I'm good with that. Uh, so, yeah, in terms of the things that I liked in this episode, there was quite a few. I, I liked Red Death. I did. Um, but I, I got to say, despite my ability to like and want to defend Red Death, I just feel like I don't I can't tell if it's the writing or the directors, the direction that they're giving Javisha Leslie's Batwoman or if it's Javisha Leslie's acting altogether. But something something in there ain't ain't hitting with me. You know, something in there is the math ain't mathin. You know what I mean? I feel like there's certain aspects of the acting, specifically at the very end of episode three and again at the end of episode four, where she the, the character is trying so hard to be hard and to be like that that villain you know what i mean like a hardcore ruggish thuggish villain and it just it just isn't hitting you know what i mean it just isn't hitting it's something that i really want to like and i want to be all for and i want to be excited about it but it just i just don't find myself enjoying it you know what i mean i, I really feel like something is lacking and, and these scenes specifically when she says i'm vengeance in episode three i felt like that was just forced it was a line that they threw in because they thought it sounded cool but the delivery was off and therefore the line was made corny and in this episode you know at the end of the episode she throws a little bit of a temper, temper tantrum you know continuing to hate barry and i think you know she talks about she talks about how barry is very evil on her earth which is why she did what she did and and you know she you know tried to you know unalive him or whatever and she you know through a you know certain situation she accidentally finds herself on this earth she's trying to get back there because she needs to stop this evil flash i think it would have been so much better and provided context to the viewer if they gave us a scene or a couple of scenes in which barry barry's flash is evil over there i would have loved to see him just absolutely unaliving people just just being an absolute menace and then you you know as the viewer you might have been able to connect a little bit more with her character and what her resolve was and why she wants to get back and maybe they could have helped her but they you know you could tell that they they're they're trying to give this story but then you can tell you can feel the producers and the writers trying to manipulate the situation so that they could they could tell their own story so the two aren't connecting you know what i mean because i think if this person really isn't bad then barry should have easily been able to open a portal with using the, the cosmic treadmill despite the the you know despite the the consequences or what could have happened that could have gotten her to her earth right but instead they were just like oh no we're not gonna help you well now you have to deal with her you know what i mean it just it it, just, it feels like they're they're trying to elongate her story even though it feels like her story is very much solvable you know her the, her issues and her problems and what she's trying to do is very much solvable even if they don't want to use the cosmic treadmill there's got to be a way that they could open another portal right and they talk about how she's from a different earth but i thought all earths were merged when it became earth prime you see what i'm saying like the math the math and the math ain't mathin it's like what it's like they're they're going against what we already know and then trying to create our the, its own story with without trying to correct what they've already you know the the things that they've already changed and so you know those are the aspects of these these episodes that i'm not really vibing with at the same time i do i'm finding things that i enjoy in the episodes i'm finding myself enjoying and excited about another week and another new episode but in terms of the story i will say i i worry every week every week i get a little more worried and a little bit more uh i find a little bit more difficulty with defending this final season again i think when oliver shows up in episode nine that's gonna be cool it's gonna be a cool moment in the last i think four or five episodes i think will be really nice but i don't know if it's going to be enough to defend what has been a relatively poor storytelling and 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 some inconsistencies with the story again we're gonna have to wait and see it's only four episodes in there's nine more to go but the pressure you know until i see a really strong episode the pressure is is getting higher you know it, it is getting higher i'm seeing you know i think outside the first episode i'm seeing less visual quality being used they're not using as much of the you know the speed force stuff uh the speed force special effects and certain things like that um and so i you know maybe my expectations were too high and like i said every episode you know my expectations are they're 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 lowering just a little bit and a little bit and a little bit every episode i'm still holding out hope that this season 
does prove to be strong. But if we're keeping, you know, if we're keeping going tabs with just this episode, just this episode, I would say, you know, it was good. It, it was decent. But the, yeah, that that moment at the very end of the episode, the, the the whole hissy fit that she throws, it just doesn't feel like big boss energy. You know, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like main villain energy. It just feels like a side villain who's kind of kind of a child. You know what I mean? In my opinion, that's just how that's just how some of these these lines and some of this delivery has presented itself to me. It's just feeling like I don't you know, like I would have expected that a little bit more from Thawne a little bit more, you know. And even, you know, because Thawne has, you know, Thawne and Barry have been at it for a long time. And so it kind of makes sense if, if at this point Thawne was just like, just like really sick of being beat by Barry. But this villain, we don't even know. We don't even know really who this villain is. And we're expected to just be on 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 board with her cause and, and, and why she hates Barry. You know, it just feels very one dimensional. You know, now she wants to bring all these villains back, take the fight to Barry. But it's not the thing is, is it, this isn't her Barry. it's different and so it just feels like you're after this guy because you couldn't beat the other one you know and and it's you know i don't know it's moments like that that aren't landing for me but again we're gonna have to wait and see overall guys i enjoyed this episode i found the end to be very cringy a little bit not as cringy as last episode but still on par with being like just very just very silly and childish writing like it doesn't feel like there's substance there it feels like they're trying to make this villain bad but no one's taking it seriously it just doesn't feel like this villain is anything to be worried about not like zoom you know like they they you know and this is before we even knew who zoom was but the character of zoom just exuded darkness and and just badassery in a way that you were on board with what he was trying to do you know and and this one just isn't landing like they there's not enough purpose behind the villain and you know there's not enough that, like the scenes that they're giving this villain just they're making it it seem like this villain shouldn't be taken seriously that's all i'm saying that's where it's coming off to me but let me know in the comment section below guys what did you think about this episode i thought that it was another relatively strong entry into the final season but at the same time i'm not going to ignore some of the flaws in terms of the writing and some of the delivery in certain scenes that i think should be taken a little bit more seriously but again that's just my opinion i'm very interested to hear what you have to say down in the comment section below let me know what your thoughts are drop a like on this video if you do enjoy these reviews we have them coming more and more every single week i hope that you're enjoying them superman and lois and many other shows in the future as always guys Thank you so much for watching. My name is That Guy Ride, and I will see you in the next episode.